My name is Peter Coyote. And uh, I came to San Francisco to study poetry with Robert Duncan. I would spent four years in college reading Donald Allen's book, Modern American Poetry, 1945 to 1960, and felt like I had discovered Kins. And I had the good fortune when I came to San Francisco to actually meet and then to become friends with a number of those people. And Lou was perhaps the first of them. And he was the first proto-Buddhist I had ever met. I became interested in Zen Buddhism when I was about 16. And I read about it, and I sort of had ideas about it. But Lou was the first person I met who actually spoke cogently about it and seemed to, seemed to grab something. So, at the risk of falling into the cheesy actor syndrome, I'm going to read a poem that he dedicated to me, but I have to give you the setting first. So, in 1969, I was living in a wild and woolly commune way out in Point Reyes, long before you could buy a cappuccino or a croissant there. <laughs> and there were 30 souls stuck into a little four-bedroom, single-stage ranch house, tongue and groove redwood with a five-gallon water heater and uh, no electricity and to bathe, we'd haul a cattle trough over a pit and build a big fire and then we'd all take a bath together. We had a lot of outbuildings and it was a pretty anarchic place. And Lou used to bring his stepson, Magda Craig's son, Huey, out there. And when Huey was about 14, Lou was very proud of his ability to scat sing and his pitch and his sense of rhythm. And well, he should have been, because Huey Gregg grew up to be Huey Lewis in the news. And Huey's son, Lou's grandson, and my son are close friends right now living in New York. So on the day in question, <laughs> I have to set the scene. Lou was out in Olima, and he was well into his cups with a big gallon bottle of wine. And we made a lot of music. We had four or five conga drummers and guitar players and a woman fiddle player. And there was a woman who lived with us named Carla that was about the most luscious 17-year-old mother on the planet. And she was dancing bare-breasted, covered with sweat and just like a pole dancer. She was fantastic. <laughs> and the rawness of the lust on Lou's face was actually instructive. <laughs> you could see, I don't know if this qualifies as a Vajra, Gary, but you could see light coming out of his eyes. <laughs> and covering every square inch of that girl's body. And he watched this for a while, and he, he turned to me and he raised one finger, and this is what he said, the worst Persian voluptuary could not imagine our most ordinary day. <laughs> And then he pitched over unconscious. <laughs> and I think of that every time I walk into a hardware store. And I see a bottle of Raid that says on it, the phrase that Lou wrote when he was a copywriter in Chicago, Raid kills bugs dead. <laughs> So this is a poem that Lou wrote after one of the trips to Olima. I'm embarrassed to admit I'm inordinately proud to see my name inscribed on it. But it's also an apt and good poem. It's called Olima Satori. Walking from the gate to the farmhouse, buzzards wheeling close as 20 feet. To the west, a ridge of redwoods, fir, that goofy point raised pine. Walking on a dirt farm road, 
small birds darting from the grass, cows, burnt hills, tongue of the Pacific Ridge and the last ocean, my boots walking. This is all you get, Olima said. And I said, that's twice as much as I could ever hope for. And Peter said, you can have the whole thing with fur-covered pillows at the same price. <laughs> Thank you very much.